Hey friends, it is Tasina from Tasina's Wellness and Beauty, and I'm doing an update on the retinol use. Last night was week four, and so that means that I've had four uses of the retinol, and I went ahead and took some mid, um, halfway through pictures of this process. The retinization process that Mary Kay has coined is for eight weeks, and starting in week six, I will get to use it twice a week, and then after week eight, you can use it every day if you want to, um, depending upon how your skin can handle the retinol. And I was quite shocked at looking at my pictures I made on Pit Collage this morning at the luminosity and, and brightness. I just, ah, I was so excited. It's just really amazing, the difference. And so I did want to show you a picture of the clinical solutions my actual bottles are in my bathroom and so i'm not going to go in there and get those because my husband is sleeping he worked third shift last night so this is the clinical solutions this is a <laughs> i'm hiding mine this is the retinol and this is the calm and facial restore milk and it's really just jam up i'm just really excited about the changes that i'm seeing take place so what I'm gonna do today um, is just do some makeup. So I'd like for you to follow along with me because as I put on makeup, I talk about things and sometimes you can learn things. And if you jump on and comment, I can learn things. Cause one of the questions that I have from you is about um, LASIK surgery. I will be 50 this month and I've always had poor eyesight since like I was 14 and I'm nearsighted and so I have been thinking about LASIK. Um, the only thing that I have, that I'm undecided about with LASIK is, I'm an artist, and so I noticed last summer that looking out into the distance as I was sit on my porches and look at the landscape, there's so much that I feel like I can see um, with the blurriness that I have, and I'm looking out my window now at the trees there, is I can see so much more of the light and darkness so I would focus more upon the the light and the shadow and I feel like I can see that because my eyes out is blurry so it's really just a blessing in many ways um the hard part about having to wear glasses and wearing bifocals is I don't wear my contacts very often at all I don't even know that I put them in my eyes in a whole year is the bifocal part and I've been told by my eye doctor that um, bifocal contacts are kind of annoying that they've not really gotten good feedback about bifocal contacts. So if you have any information on that, if you enjoy them or dislike them, I'd like to know that as well. So, but putting on makeup can be quite um, a challenge sometimes because I have to get right up on the mirror. And that is why my face is so close, even as I'm videoing and talking to you and I often have to look in the, the mirror because of poor eyesight. Um, but I did want to show you just how pretty it is today. I'm going to try flipping. Well, I, I can't. I can't see whether I can flip it around. So never mind. <laughs> All right. So we're going to go ahead with makeup. I'm going to start out with my Mary Kay primer that has SPF 15. If you've watched any of my videos, you see me use this every time. Not only does it help your makeup stay on, it helps to get in those pores so that your foundation doesn't sink into your pores and so i'm i'm ready to see that at the end of eight weeks if my pore size has gotten smaller i have been unable to wear the cream to powder foundation um and i really like the consistency of the cream to powder foundation but it tends to sink in my pores so this is the eye primer from mary Kay. For eye cream, I do use, because you can't put retinol on your eyes. So for the eye cream, I do use Mary Kay's Time Wise Repair Eye Cream that has 0 0.3 encapsulated retinol. Um, it's not pure retinol um, like we find with the clinical solutions. And you can't put that on your eyes. I'm going to put some beneath my eyes to help my concealer stay. And for concealer today, I am going to use... My CC cream, it has 15 SPF in it, and the CC cream is um, a little dewy looking, a little luminous. 
Um, I prefer matte foundation. And when you do have wrinkles and fine lines, um, you don't always want to accentuate that with something um, dewy or luminous. But I wanted to try that. I think I like it a little better than the actual concealer for underneath my eyes. So I'm going to try that today. And I'm going to set one with powder and the other I'm not going to do so that later in the day I can kind of see if the powder is helping or worsening um, the effect of things getting done in my fine lines, the product. All right, so we're going to move ahead with um, the TimeWise 3D Foundation. 3D meaning that it contains some of the same ingredients as our TimeWise Anti-Aging Skincare does. And the 3 means that it defends, um, but with the D part, defends, delays, and delivers. And the 3 are 3 patent-pending ingredients that help to fight aging. I'm going to use my foundation brush, which after it's used today, I really need to wash my brush. It is important that you keep your brushes clean because um, once you start to see your makeup is not going on as well, then it's definitely time to clean your brushes. But you can definitely get it done before you get to that point. I start on my, the center of my face and I'm just spreading out. The color is suiting me better now that some of my um, redness is gone. My skin is more bright, it's more luminous. Cause I'm still using the same color that I bought um, either in the spring or summer, I, th I guess uh, the summer. And so it's still, it had gotten a little too light. For winter, surprise! For winter, it got too light, which is weird. You would think for in the spring, but our skin does change in tone. And we sometimes have to change it. Even our skin hair, skin care has to change. Sometimes with the season itself, your skin, skin care has to change. I actually had to go to normal dry cleanser this winter when I normally use combo to oily. And this is suiting me so well right now. I'm not really concerned. I'm, I'm not having to, to go down below here, below my jawline. Just making sure it's well blended. Getting in creases and crevices <laughs> that form as we age. So if it looks like I'm uh, being a little tedious with it, that's, that's just because why. Okay, I do put a little bit of foundation beneath my eyes. So I'm going to use the very light. And they always tell us up in here. Um, they're printed there what color they are. This is the very light CC cream comes in five different shades and It's sort of light. It took the place of the tinted moisturizer that Mary Kay used to sell um, It's buildable I'm gonna put some right on my little brush that I use for concealer I'm just gonna do it like that, but I'm actually gonna bounce it on with my blending sponge But instead of using my fingers, that's what I'm doing Hey, I finally got me a blending sponge. I used to use, you know, one of the orange blending sponges before I started using Mary Kay. That would be what I would use um, to put on my foundation, which worked really well. The, the blending sponge is usually for giving you that more sheer light coverage. And the brush that I just used is for medium coverage. And then we have a blending brush, which is for full coverage. Very dense little brush, short hairs. So I'm just bouncing on that product. Okay, I'm going to look in the mirror. Actually looks pretty good. I'm not going to put on any more. I'm not like going to put on a second application. I think that's pretty good. If you... Um, if you have kind of these pockets starting like I do, 
down in here, which can happen because of, as we start to age, even as early as our 20s, the collagen and elastin is produced less as, as we begin to age. Every year it gets, uh, uh, you know, we lose a little more and a little more. That retinol does help to support the actual production of collagen and elastin again, so, which is great. But also underneath our skull shrinks and begins to change. So um, you can start to see these little pockets here. And so it is helpful to you make sure you're using an eye cream that's really supportive for for this area in here and making sure you're keeping that area hydrated because just keeping it hydrated is going to help that area look better and making sure that you are actually a person who who drinks a lot of liquids so of course water they say is always the best thing to be drinking but treating yourself from the inside out with your your diet and and what you're drinking so we're going to move on to the brows I have videos showing where I do my brows, so this part will probably be deleted and I'll move forward in the video. Okay, I moved ahead, got my eyebrows done. I used my Precision Brow Liner and I also used my Brow Gel Tint. And I may end up having to switch colors with the gel tint. I'm not sure. I'll have to look back at this video and see how this looks. I got my hair colored yesterday and I forgot to get my stylist to also color my brows because I do that every time. But yesterday, I just totally forgot. I also went ahead with the Intuitive Lip Balm that I've shown you in a video before. And this is the Intuitive Lip Balm. It was a limited edition with Mary Kay that is no longer available for sale, but I do have one. And if you do not have a consultant, I can totally let you have, have, have one. This is in Pink Rose. I never bought the berry. And of course, they're not available now. But the Intuitive Lip Balm, as you can see, looks like this sort of translucent, translucent, but according to the pH of your lips, is going to be the darkness of pink that you're going to see on your lips. And like I said, this is in pink slash rose. I also went ahead with my contour. I put just my line here. I've not blended yet. And you put it within the hollow of your cheek. I'm going to go ahead and blend that some upward. And I put some on my double chin because this area tends to get highlighted. Light falls right on that and highlights that area. I'm going to go with the Rogue Rose today, which I use more often than any other of the uh, three blushes that I have. But Mary Kay offers many colors in the Chroma Fusion blush. I believe that this coming Monday, March the 8th, is going to be International Women's Day. Okay, I've got on that liner, the Onyx that I did for my liner today. I really like that. And also my mascara. So I noticed that while I was looking in my mirror, I've got a little bit of, uh, my brow tint got a little bit of there today. So I have scraped some of that off. And I'm just dipping my brush down into my lid. And I'm going to grab a little bit of foundation. This is another place you could put a little bit of highlighter or your concealer up there to lighten that area up. Um, I'm fine with how my makeup's looking today, so I'm not going to do that. Okay, so let's look at it with glasses on. Wow, they my glasses really need to be cleaned. I'd have to do that. But... So with the eyeshadow and with liner, I don't want to go all around my eyes when I wear nearsighted glasses. And that's because that's just going to make my eyes look even smaller in the lenses. So one way to keep your eyes appearing more large, um, more natural, more standard looking as far as size goes, is to not put... Um, shadow underneath your eyes or eyeliner all around your eyes not that you can't you can you just run that risk of them looking even smaller if you wear if you're farsighted and your eyes look magnified in your glasses that is one way to 
make your eyes appear, small, appear smaller is to put that shadow all around um, and even liner on the bottom. So, But I don't do that so that mine will look a little larger. So that's the finished look. I'm excited about the retinol. I would love to share with you about some retinol one-on-one -on -one if you would like to contact me personally um, through, you know, message me here. And I hope you have a great week and a happy International Women's Day coming up.